I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the updated MY24 Polestar 2 Long Range. Now when I say updated, this is a pure engineering update. The only visual change on the MY24 Polestar 2 is this filled-in Stormtrooper grill panel at the front here that removes the grill that it had before, which it obviously doesn't need because it doesn't have it anymore, and does that colour panel there. The colours are the same, meaning white, greys, a dark blue and black, the wheels are the same, the 19 inch wheels on this are the same as the model before. The up-spec all-wheel drive version does have a slightly different design for its optional 20s, but the rest is all the same. It is just the grille that says what's going on underneath. Now, in a very unusual turn of events for a modern car, the single motor, standard range and long range have both gone from front-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive. The only two other examples I can think of that have done that is like the Triumph 1300 Toledo Dolomite, which is sort of 1970 to somewhere in the late 70s had some rear wheel drive models and a range topping front wheel drive model and then another british car the mgzt had four cylinder front drive and then when it got a mustang v8 in it rear wheel drive with the same body and that's what's going on here but it's the first time in an ev now the changes to new electric motors the upgraded lithium-ion batteries various other engineering bits and pieces have given the MY24 Polestar 2 up to 22% more range, up to 34% faster charging, and 9% less energy consumption. This long range rear wheel drive now has 220 kilowatts instead of 170, and 490 newton meters instead of 330. So it has significantly more power, drives significantly further, and charges quicker, and looks slightly better. So what's not to love? Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. There is one other change, and that is the sticker that they all seem to have in Australia. Now it says 82 kilowatt hours instead of 77, and 220 kilowatts instead of 170. So if someone doesn't peel that off, there are two things you can tell aside from the grill. The rest is the same, which means a fairly handsome shape. It's a fast back with a lift back at the back, which is what Polestar calls it. It feels quite compact from inside the car, even though the dimensions don't really convey that from outside. So it's all about having this shoulder line and having the tapering of the glass house in there. So it feels compact inside, but is slightly larger outside. It does give it a little bit of a, a dynamic kind of dimension. I wish they had have changed the wheels because I'm not completely in love with these, although you can upgrade to 20s on the long range rear driver with these sort of bladed panels that do look a little bit better than that, but would not improve the ride, even though it has had suspension changes as well, as we shall discover when we drive it, to make it smoother, because it really needed that. The tyres are the same, Michelin Pilot, 24545 R19s, they've got terrific grip. Yeah, the rest of it is the same, and as we shall see in the boot, it still has the same amount of space. Now, there have been some equipment upgrades for MY24, and these include standard wireless charging on all variants, which is that little sloping panel just here, we also have some active safety upgrades that include blind spot information system with steering support, cross traffic alert with brake support, rear AB with collision mitigation, a 360 degree camera, and auto dimming electric rear view mirrors. This car here also includes an optional pilot pack, which is $3,500 and includes adaptive cruise control. It also includes pilot assist, which means it's got extra cameras to use itself to lane center in the car. This car also has a $6,000 plus pack that includes at least 10 additional features, not all of which I can remember, but the highlights are this panoramic glass roof here. It has a Harman Kardon stereo, which is a 600 watt 13 speaker system. It has enhanced illumination in underneath these bits here and on the doors. There's also an optional leather package in here, which is called Animal Welfare Napa Leather. So the animals have been followed to make sure they haven't been mistreated before they've been used for their skin to make this lovely upholstery and matching the upholstery in here which is made in Scotland is this sort of light ash wood inlay in here across the dash which looks really nice and really does match nicely with these zinc coloured seats. The rest of the interior of the Polestar 2 is exactly the same and that is absolutely no problem at all. I love the fact that it has this tiny little grid pattern in the top of this dash fill here which is really not that soft touch it is a little bit but it doesn't look like plastic it actually looks like upholstery and it looks really nice with this inlay of upholstery here plus the ash wood here there's more upholstery over the speakers here we've got leather on the doors it runs into the top of the door top here so really the only plastic is down around the bottom sections of the doors and the lower section of this console here and it all looks really nicely finished 
this vehicle is manufactured in China for Polestar. So who said the Chinese can't do good build quality? Because here is proof they definitely can. The rest of the interior, I love the screens. This 11.5 inch portrait touchscreen here. It's all very sort of large fonted and simple, but all the fonts match. The dashboard isn't trying to do too much fussiness. This 10.25 inch driver information display is very clean and simple. It's all super easy to use. These things here, if you activate them, you push the button once to get the stuff up, you can change the steering waiting there. You can change the driver assist instantly. Very easy to see, really safe when you're driving. And when you want it to go away, you just press the icon again and it goes away. Same with the ventilation. You push it to come up, push it to go away, and it sits there along the bottom the whole time with the little seat icon that has fan cooling and seat heating and steering heating here for the driver. It's just super simple to use. You do have to use the USB-C plug, which is via these two cute little flaps here next to the wireless charging to plug in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but that is sort of kind of still expected. It's a shame that it's not wireless, but it is very easy to use. This car does have Google Assistant as well, where you can do a lot of stuff by saying, hey, Google. So it all is very well interconnected. The other thing I love about the Polestar 2, particularly in this spec, is that even though it has this cloth covered anthracite roof lining, because it has the glass roof and because it has the zinc colored leather, which is really beautiful to touch, mind you, and matches with the light wood, it has an airiness to it that doesn't feel enclosed. And it very easily could be that, especially if it didn't have the glass in the roof, because like I said on the outside, the pillars and the glass house in this car do taper quite a lot. So when you're in here, you feel like you're in a really compact vehicle. Now that works great for the driving position because the steering wheel is directly ahead of me we've got full electric seat adjustment in this plus pack model so that's great with driver memory and two buttons on the door here this feels really connected great steering wheel great vision it just feels compact it doesn't feel flabby like a lot of evs do because they are so glassy the driving position in here it just feels sporty i'm sitting low i'm not even on the lower sitting position here with these optional electric seats it's normally manual with manual cranks there is still a bit of manual adjustment in there though and that is these under thigh extenders that both the driver and the passenger get which is really good it's not just the driver and no one else it's shared among the compartment directly located in front of me is the steering wheel nothing's offset it all feels very intimate without being too tight what is a little bit tight though is the storage now in the door here for the driver i can get my coconut water in here kind of sideways but it doesn't really have much bottle storage at all. I don't know what kind of bottle you would put in there because it doesn't look like it's shaped for anything to hold there in place. Here we have one cup holder in the center. We can get this padded armrest to flip all the way back. We've got another cup holder exposed here, which is kind of cool. I suppose you could put something in there and keep it warm, maybe, because it doesn't have cloth under here, it's plastic. There is a little bit extra here next to the wireless charging. And there's two little bins down the side here with a little rubberized mat here to put some stuff, which is shared on both sides. I always thought that the USB charters were going to be there, but they're not. They're there, which is great. They're not hidden. But for the rest of the storage, it's all a little bit not great. As for the sound of the Harman Kardon stereo, I think it's pretty good. It isn't blow your mind amazing, but if that's the upspec version over the standard version, then I would definitely choose the Harman Kardon with the Plus Pack because it really does add a layer of plushness in here, even though, as we shall discover when we drive it, the revamped ride isn't quite that. The back seat in the Polestar 2 is fairly compact, but it also is very comfortable if you approach it as a four-seater. Sitting here behind myself, my toes are touching the front seat and it's not all the way down, but I am elevated. It does have theatre seating position, reasonable under thigh support, pretty good forward vision around that sort of very Volvo-esque headrest in front of us. Love the stitching and the general trim of the interior. Like it's really beautifully made. Little suede panels here and on the sides of the seats here. That is lovely. The center seat is rock hard, too high, and has a really high transmission tunnel in here. So this is not your flat floored EV of the future. It is like an old rear wheel drive car because it's rear wheel drive. But this is about being a four seater. We do have the sort of Volvo-esque again air vents in the middle here. We've got the seat heating down there. We've got a pair of USB-C chargers behind this little flap here. We've got these netted map pockets at the backs of the front seats. Again, very Volvo-esque in their design, which works great in my opinion. All of the trim and the textures are beautiful. The storage, however, in the door here, I can barely fit my coconut water wedged in the side here. It's 600ml bottle only. There is another pair of cup holders in here. 
in the center armrest, which does match nicely with the height of the door armrest. So this comfort here, and especially with the panoramic glass roof, does make it feel surprisingly airy. One of the ongoing cool aspects about the Polestar 2 is that it looks like a bit of a sedan, which appeases all markets, but it's actually a liftback with this electric tailgate here. Polestar says 405 litres of boot space in this fairly vast area. The seat splits 60-40 and goes dead flat. It has a little panel here that you can lift up to separate luggage so you can have stuff in the front there so it doesn't slide around. In here we have a little elasticised thing here where you can hold a drink bottle if you're going to boot camp or something. Another little net thing here where you can store stuff in there. These two little hooks that hang down and automatically flip up as well as luggage tie downs here and underneath the floor under here it has a really deep section down here which I imagine would be for charging cords and stuff but could be for a whole bunch of other things should you want to disguise them. Easily the biggest floor in their original Polestar 2, in fact it's kryptonite really, was the ride of the car. It was just not good, like borderline terrible. Too lumpy around town, never settled, never plush. So much movement from the body that it was almost kind of nauseating based on our experience at Car of the Year with that vehicle. Sitting in the back I felt rather unwell. So this model straight off the bat you notice just how much smoother it is. It is not plush, it has not become that vehicle, but it is significantly better than it was before and much, much more livable. Now Polestar recommends 41 PSI in each of these 19 inch Michelin tires, so that is definitely going some way towards a little bit of the jiggle that it still has, but it is significantly improved. The other big change is switching to rear-wheel drive, which is a huge benefit for the car. Even with 170 kilowatts and 330 newton meters, I think the old car had, it just had too much power for the front wheels. Whereas now with 220 and 490, it's great. You can gas the car coming out of a corner and it will actually slide the tail around in this lovely smooth transition that just has a whole new level of dynamism to the way the Polestar drives. It adds so much more engagement. It's just got a, another dimension in its character that it didn't have before. I haven't driven the all-wheel drive one with the rear drive bias, but if that carries through an element of that, because it was all very grippy, but also kind of two-dimensional as well. A little bit of a step out there, but not much. A little bit of a slide and it caught it in ESC, but we could also do this where we go drive and it just has ESC sport there. So it's just one touch away. The steering also goes light, standard, firm. I've been driving it in standard. On really curvy roads, I've been driving it in firm because it works well, but for the most of the time, you're best off to just have the steering in standard, it's fine. It just helps the car point a little bit crisper in the corners, but then if the corners are really challenging, you kind of want firm. The general dynamics in the Polestar 2 are very much nicely balanced, sweet and flowing. It feels keen, it doesn't feel like it weighs two tons. It's beautifully refined in terms of its drivetrain and stuff. There isn't ridiculous additional synthesized sounds. You can just hear a little bit of a sort of a, a whisk in the background of the way that it accelerates uh, from a low speed if you need to overtake. This is all you really need. The 0-100 claim is 6.2 seconds. It was 7.4. It's 4.5 in the all drive and 4.2 with the performance pack. But here we are doing 30 k's an hour and I hit it. It's instantly to 70, straight away. It's just, it's all you need. And sure, above 100, the other one would be a lot faster, but then we're in Australia where we're limited to 110. And so I think for Australians, given that the range of this, the WLTP claim at least, is 654, which is 103 kilometers more than it was before, and significantly more than its two siblings, both of which are under 600, then I would suggest that this is the Polestar 2 variant to have because it's just more fun to drive and still easily quick enough. Now we have got a few extra safety systems in here that we had before as standard, like I mentioned when I was doing the cabin stuff, but this also has the pilot on top of that. So it has a whole bunch of extra stuff as well. It's all really easy to access again, car, assist. It's all showing there in icons what you need. Lane keeping aid is on. It sort of generally seems to only work with the cruise control on. As far as I know, I may be doing it wrong, but that's seems to be the way it works for me. And it's all fairly conscientious in the way that it works. It's fairly tight in its tolerances, but it also does it fairly subtly. It isn't 
too overzealous and doesn't do that sort of snatch and grab thing that we hate about active safety systems that are poorly calibrated. It is very much in the Volvo vein where it is safe. In terms of the ride on the Polestar 2 though, with these 19 inch tires and with everything being so much quieter, you can actually hear the wheels and the suspension thump away over bumps and stuff. It is probably the trade-off for having the handling to be so tight and so good, but there is that. So what you're buying here is really a sports sedan that happens to have a much better ride than before and more dynamic involvement than before than actually just another boring EV. This is now elevating what is a fairly attainable EV. It's under 100k. I know that that is not an average price of a vehicle, but you do get a lot of car for that money and it does feel like it's worth the money. Certainly inside, this Polestar 2 is lux and I really, really like it. One thing that I still think could be improved though is the brake regeneration. It works extremely well in recuperating energy and adds definite charge to the battery and really drops the consumption overall figure just by a little bit of hard driving downhill with a little bit of serious braking. It does a significant improvement to that kind of efficiency level. But here in the car icon again, one pedal drive, we are in now in standard, it was in low, it should be in standard, and it remembers what you're in. So when you put it in these settings, other than ESC Sport, it'll remember what you are when you start up next time. It is not like iPedal in a Hyundai or a Kia. It just doesn't have the same regeneration. Like it's slowing down here fairly promptly, but it just doesn't have that sort of trail brake effect in corners. And if it had a little bit more serious amount of stopping regeneration, then you could really just one pedal drive it on a curvy road. And you can't do that in this updated Polestar 2. You still need to use the brakes. And so it doesn't quite have that sort of one pedal dynamism and delicacy that it could have but doesn't quite. I don't think you need to go to the dual motor all wheel drive model. I think this rear drive long range car has everything you need. Switching the drive to the rear adds a whole degree of involvement to the dynamics that really makes it so much more fun to drive. The ride is so much better. All the other things we already liked about the Polestar 2 now have an extra layer of involvement and engagement about the way that it drives and what it is. And so, I don't think that 4.5 or 4.2 to 100 is really what the Polestar 2 is about. The performance of this vehicle is more than enough and it has the longest range, which is really what you want in an EV. Apparently, Australian buyers are favoring all three variants equally, the standard range rear drive, the long range rear drive, and the all-wheel drive. But I think the long range rear drive is absolutely the sweet spot in this range. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video. Hit the notification bell and tell us what you think about this engineering-led MY24 Polestar 2 update or about chasing cars. Thanks for watching.